of the water to be used, either water for injection quality or freshly filtered demineralized water. Firstly, the water required to mix with the cleaning agent should be measured. Next, the exact quantity of cleaning agent for the amount of water in the container should be measured and added to the water. Water should never be added to the removal agent. from machinery and equipment of all component parts which require separate cleaning. Care should be taken when breaking down equipment so that components are not scratched, chipped or damaged during the disassembly process. These parts should be removed from the room and placed in the reprocessing area. All filling lines should be flushed with the appropriate cleaning agent or water as specified in the SOP. Or other product components should be gathered up using a brush, cleaning cloth or monofilament broom. Every attempt should be made not to disturb the soil nor cause it to be suspended in the air. The initial cleanup should be performed with slow, deliberate motion. Signs of deterioration of equipment should be noted on lint-free paper and the supervisor informed. Where equipment in the cleanroom has moving belts, tracks or conveyors, special care should be taken to remove any worn plastic or metal filings which rub off or abrade on the undersurfaces. This occurs frequently and the areas where it happens should be thoroughly cleaned to remove these particles can be done using either a one bucket or a two bucket system. But it should be remembered that many particles settle or are trodden onto the floor, so it's critical that the cleaning must be thorough. The one bucket system uses a single bucket of cleaner, disinfectant or germicidal cleaner. The method is to apply the agent to the floor in a wet application, followed by removal with mop or vacuum. The two bucket system uses two buckets of germicidal cleaner. One bucket is used to apply fresh solution and the second bucket is used to rinse the mop and as a container to hold the used solution picked up from the floor. Obviously if the SOP specifies the two bucket system that's the one to be used as it's been validated. SOPs, SOPs may require periodic fogging of the clean room. This process takes place after the regular cleaning has been completed. The whole area is treated with a fine decontaminating spray. As the fumes are generally harmful if inhaled, it's important that the SOP is carefully observed and that the operators are properly protected while preparing any of the solution as well as during the fogging operation itself. Described period, usually about 24 hours, the clean room must be cleaned again to remove residual fogging solution. The final step is to document what was done in the cleaning log for the supervisor to sign off.